Hey everyone, my name is Peyton and in this video I want to cover how to set up some movement inside of your environments. Uh, this can be really great just to add uh, movement to your scene and make it feel a little bit more lived in. Even if you're doing something for a portfolio and you're wanting to record some videos of a fly through or so of your environment, uh, it can always be nice to have these extra little details and relatively some of them are uh, pretty simple to set up. Uh, so in this case, I want to actually show how I set up this fan that we have and how I actually have different uh, speed variables based off of the instance of the fan. Um, and they're all just one asset that I kind of can throw into uh, the scene and move around and it's super easy. Uh, so I want to start by pausing this simulation and I'm going to actually delete these two out of here. Uh, I have one pre-existing for that, but I want to start from scratch. Um, and what I'm going to do first is show that uh, with my static meshes, so the two models that I brought in, I actually have the fan blades and the ceiling fan um, as separate pieces. If I open these two, you'll see that they are uh, yeah, entirely separate. And we're going to combine them into a blueprint, and that's where we'll actually do our movement and everything. Um, but I want the blades to be separate just because it's going to be a lot easier to uh, rotate and animate with them um, than if it were to be one, because uh, it would potentially, if we had it as one, actually rotate the whole body of the fan and everything as well. So I'm trying to make it uh, you know, realistic and everything. And one thing that I also did do is made sure that the pivot point for both of the items is at the exact same location. So you'll see this one is slightly below the grid. And it's because uh, if they overlap each other, um, then they will basically be where it's supposed to be on the, the fan itself. Um, but with that, let's go ahead and I'm going to right click down here and start a uh, create a blueprint class. So I'm going to click that and then I'm going to hit actor. So there we go. I'm going to name this our ceiling, uh, ceiling fan. And then I'll just put a or uh, let me name it something else asset. So there we go. Now we have this. I'm going to open up my blueprint and this is what we have at the moment. So nothing's in here. And uh, what I was talking about with the pivots, we'll see now if I select the ceiling fan a and the ceiling fan blades a and drag those in. There we go. Now uh, with them both being in here. Uh, you can actually say that, yeah, like I said, they're overlapping, so that's pretty nice. Um, and now I want to actually set up the uh, the rotation on this. And this is going to be pretty easy overall just to get the initial setup. So what I'm going to do first is I want to go over here and I want to actually add another component here. And I can type in rotate and you can find rotating movement. So I'm going to add this. Uh, component here and that should be good. Now the problem is at this moment is if we hit compile and let's say that I gave it a value uh, so default it's already 180 um, then if I brought in our ceiling fan asset and basically here let me drag it to there which is nice because it'll just snap to the ceiling. Um, if I simulate it great but the problem is it's rotating the whole body you might not be able to see it too well uh, but it's rotating everything and we kind of want it just to rotate the blade and nothing else um, so that's where we're going to have to actually go in a little bit and set some things up so uh, i'm going to leave that in here for now and then go back into my blueprint over here and just going to go over uh, just in case wherever you're at Go over to the event graph. Um, so what I want to do first is come out of the event begin play. Uh, so this is on begin play. I want to do a set updated component and it's actually going to grab the rotating movement component. So that's basically what we want to do. Um, and then specifically because right now it's just doing the whole component. I can actually uh, select that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab my ceiling fan blades and drag those out. And now if I plug that in um, to our new updated component and I just compile, it should. Now if we simulate here, you'll notice that it's not moving the, the body at all. Uh, you're not seeing that, that um, 
yeah uh, movement of the the geo so uh, now it's actually just yeah moving the blade itself but the problem is um one other thing just kind of simple but i feel like it's a really nice touch is that if i were to duplicate this over all of the fans are going to be the exact sam speed and everything um and of course like they are kind of offset like this but it would be nice if i could change the value of the the fan per instance um because otherwise you would have to like you know make a different blueprint of it and actually um pretty much like change the value in each blueprint but instead what we can do is actually expose that value and it's gonna be much easier for uh, setting that so i'm gonna go back into our ceiling fan asset again and over here now what i want to do is I'm going to actually make a variable. Um, and so down here, I want to make a new variable and I'm gonna name it rotate speed. There we go. And then I'm gonna switch it from a Boolean over to a rotator. So there we go. So I want to now drag out from the rotating movement and I'm going to set rotate uh, set rotation rate. So there we go. And now that's going to be our target is the rotating movement. Um, and I can plug this in here and then down here uh, where we have our rotation rate, I can actually drag in the rotate speed and I want to not set, but I want to get it. So I'm going to do that and plug that in there. So Cool. We now have that set up. Um, it should be fine and all, but um, one thing that we'll want to do is actually uh, allow this to be exposed uh, because right now we can't actually see it in uh, games, so it's not really doing anything. So I want to click on the rotate speed, and then I want to do uh, over here, you'll find actually in the details panel, once you've clicked on rotate speed or whatever you name your uh, rotator variable, uh, you can actually see that it says instance edible. I want to click that. And then the second thing that I want to uh, also click is expose on spawn. So I'm going to check that box as well. And now I should be able to compile. It is there. And I'm going to close out of that. So now if I have this, let's go there. You can see that over here on our uh, right hand side, we have our rotation speed variable, uh, just like it was actually in our uh, blueprint. And so um, now if I, let's say, change this value over here to that, you're gonna see 180. Um, but then let's say that just for uh, purposes of showing it, I'm gonna set this to 500 and you'll see that we have a much faster fan. Um, and so every single uh, version of it, every sin single instance can be set to a different variable. Uh, and that can be really nice because now I can, you know, actually play through my environment, have uh, some really unique animations kind of happening just to add to the environment overall. Um, this is kind of a simple technique, at least for something that's rotating, of course, if you have a windmill or a fan, um, but just at least going through this process and thinking about like what else can you kind of add to your environments um, to give it a little bit more life, especially if you are planning to do some video recordings. I think uh, they're really great just to yeah kind of add that life to the environment overall. So. Um, but yeah, that's about it for this one. Hopefully it was simple to follow along with and I will catch you in the next one.